for all those who appreciate the work that we're doing here on Standing for Truth, please hit that subscribe button because we are just getting started. Good evening, folks. Ken Hovind here in the crew at Dinosaur Adventureland in Lenox, Alabama, April 29th, 2020. Man, if I'd have known I was going to live this long, I'd have probably eaten more ice cream. Ha! Anyway, we're the folks who believe the Bible is literally true and scientifically accurate. God made everything in six days. Dinosaurs always lived with man. And evolution is one of the dumbest and most dangerous religions in the history of the world. Teach the kids that came from a rock. And they do teach that. Now, so I almost got to that Q&A tonight. We'll get there again. We've been looking high and low for one functioning brain cell in those who claim there's no God and, all, and we all came from a dot of nothing. I think that's ridiculous. So whack an atheist is an easy game to learn. Uh, whack an atheist, like whack-a-mole, when they stick their head up, whack it back down. So when an atheist makes, sticks his head up, makes a dumb claim, uh, whack it back down. Even small children can learn how to play the game. The Bible says, the fool has said in his heart, there's no God. And you're a fool to believe there's no God. But a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. And you smite the scorner and the simple will beware. Okay. I have been looking high and low for what is the best evidence for evolution. I was almost going to do this tonight and just whack several atheists at once. But <coughs> several months ago, in my debate with a guy who calls himself the um, or conspiracy cats, he asked me to show how ERVs did not prove evolution. I'd never heard anyone use them as evidence for evolution, so I said I'm not prepared for that. He and other atheists have used my deferral as evidence for their religion of evolution. They're saying Hovind wasn't prepared for that, therefore that's proof for evolution. A guy named Weist Rhino on Twitter said, uh, someone needs to get a Kent Hovind. I'm not prepared for that gif into. That said, the only gif that comes for a search for Hovind is something else, okay? The Dutch atheist wrote in, uh, I'm not prepared for that, Hovind's latest release. Somebody actually did a song. I'm not prepared for that, an atheist did. He has uh, 15 subscribers. To his channel and 117 views. Wow, and he did a whole song, I'm not prepared for that. Charlie Chimp wrote in eight hours ago, it's downloaded today. Kent's still not prepared for that. Uh, so why do you refuse to debate conspiracy cats? He agreed to debate for the rematch, but you never rescheduled. He's not prepared for that. So what he was talking about was, he said, endogenous retroviruses are proof for evolution. Endogenous, endo means inside, exo means outside. So endogenous means in the genes, gen, gene code, gen, endogenous retrovirus. Well, endogenous, growing or reproduced or produced by growth from deep tissue, caused by factors inside the organism or system. Endogenous, produced within or caused by factors within the organism. Retrovirus. A mem any member of a large family of RNA viruses that includes, and it names several of them here, including uh, HIV. They're saying this is evidence for evolution, that we all came from a rock. Okay, for the guys from Standing for Truth that are standing by here, uh, I have been told by uh, the, uh, what did somebody else suggest we call him? Not Conspiracy Cats, the, uh, nobody had another name for him. Uh, fallacious feline or something like that. Anyway, that he said endogenous retroviruses are evidence for evolution. And uh, the guys from Standing for Truth, uh, you and Matt have, I understand, uh, done some research on this. Can you tell everybody what your thoughts are on endogenous retroviruses? Is this evidence for evolution? Of course, good question, uh, Dr. Holden. I wanted to say hi to you and everybody at the Idol. Uh, it's a blessing to be on your program, and you've, uh, your ministry has been a tremendous uh, influence on my life, so uh, God bless. Well, thank you, sir. And no problem. Um, yeah, I, uh, I do enjoy tackling this argument. Um, what I'm going to do, Dr. Holden, is I'm going to destroy uh, endogenous retroviruses right now. I'm going to cram about hours and hours worth of information into just roughly a three-minute explanation, breaking it down. Um, Dr. Olman, this all comes down to the evolutionist assumption that the vast majority of our genome is based on evolutionary leftovers, genomic fossils. You've heard it before, Dr. Holman, junk DNA. Right. So they base their argument, the conspiracy cat bases his argument on these BRDs, on a false, uh, false premise and a false starting point. Um, personally, I've, I've had 
numerous debates with evolutionists, biologists, for example, uh, many of the same ones you've actually debated, Dr. Holden, including conspiracy cats. And um, in my debate with cats, we discussed ERDs in great detail. So for anybody who would like to see that debate, just go over to my channel, uh, subscribe if, if you like the Young Earth creation material we're, we're putting out, and you can search for that debate. But the most crucial question to ask on this uh, topic, Dr. Holden, is are ERVs, and other various classes of these retro transposons, are they the leftover remnants of ancient viral infections in our DNA? That's what the evolutionists would have us believe. Right. right. Are they, uh, or are they created units of, of DNA function? Because as you know, Dr. Holden, based on the design model, we would of course expect and predict that the vast majority of our DNA and these DNA elements are the result of initial design and therefore should be functional. And not junk like uh, the evolutionists would uh, right. would assume. So, <laughs> Dr. Holman, what does the evidence suggest? Well, I'll go over that real quick. Uh, we um, we now know that not only these ERVs, Dr. Holman, but also other classes of retro transposons and the so-called parasitic DNA that they'll refer to as they accomplish many crucial functions. In just to name a couple, in regulating gene expression cell differentiation and development. So it looks as if these are not actually remnants of viral infections, but functional DNA units. And you could read paper after paper after paper um, from the secular, uh, from the secularist, do documenting the various nu uh, numerous uh, functions found in these ERVs. For example, you can even read straight from some of these papers, they talk about how these endogenous retroviruses frequently act to distribute regulatory information and thus confer genes in patterns of expression and function. Now, Pelogia, who you've lacked before, and you've done a great job doing it, Dr. Holman, huh? I watched his response video to your um, last video on ERV. Uh, their response to this, and I'll just destroy this real quick, they'll say that these functions we're talking about, Dr. Holman, were co-op. What that means is that these functions were adopted by the ERVs, um, these crucial functions. So that's more philosophy, though, because now they've jumped to fairy tale. Because claiming that they were co-opted is more uninformative gloss with no real empirical evidence. Right. So I always ask the evolutionists. This is what I ask conspiracy cats in my debate. I said, okay, if these functions were co-opted or adopted, then show me a paper, any empirical evidence that actually demonstrates a non-functional ERV going from non-functional to extremely functional in the genome. And I've debated a, a biologist before, Dr. Hoven, and he said word for word, if, if I said I could show you one of those, I'd be lying. Because remember, that's their, that's their philosophy. Uh, and one other question you can ask them too, Dr. Hoven, is if viral DNA is inserted at random into the genome, it is much more likely to disrupt existing genes. For example, a blindfolded painter will most likely mess up the painting he is working on, by just applying random brush strokes to it. But the fact that we see these DNA elements are extremely functional to our genetics suggests that this is uh, simply evidence for uh, common design based on shared function. So, so these uh, endogenous retroviruses that they're claiming are evidence, I'll show you, here's the charts they use in the books. They'll say humans and gorillas and gibbons, for instance, have certain ERVs uh, space, place someplace in their genome, <clears throat> and that proves that we are related X number of million years ago. They have the oldest uh, HERVL -E -E insertions were 100 to 150 million years ago. So, the, but see, the ERVs weren't even discovered until 1960s. And so, right. they were teaching right. evolution for 100 years before that. So now they're saying this is the best evidence for evolution. I say, guys, hold it. Think about that for a minute. You were teaching this for 100 years before you had any evidence? All the other evidence has been disproven, which I cover in my video number four, lies in the textbooks. And so what was their response when you pointed out that ERVs uh, all have a function? Yeah, so they would just say that they were uh, co-opted through mutation, but they can't actually demonstrate that uh, empirically, Dr. Olvin. Um, they're just inferring that it's, it's more so their philosophy. And, and you made a good point too. They'll say, oh, we can watch these insertions. 
and you pointed this out, I believe, is in your debate with Mark Drysdale, and it was a great point that uh, no, we can't see these uh, viruses being inserted. They see these elements in our genetics, and they assume that they were inserted right. millions of years ago in some common ancestors. So that, uh, like you say, that's where they jump from science to fairy tale. That the uh, the functions. So, for example, like you pointed out, Tucker, when Bill point to some endogenous retroviral element that we share with the chimpanzees, and um, it's not a surprise to us that we may share more of these DNA elements with the chimpanzee than we would with, say, um, you know, an old world monkey or a dog or a fish. Because, I mean, if you look at anatomy, morphology, physiology, we share more in common with the chimp. Anyway. So of course we would share more of those elements with the chip than with uh, you know a creature that we share less in, in anatomy with as well. But um, it, actually, Ron, well, did you have a point uh, there, brother? Oh yeah, I mean I can I can interject at any point, but uh, I kind of wanted to give people kind of a rundown on basically why evolutionists think that this is such great evidence. So I, I can touch on what you are, or <laughs> I can jump right into. Yeah, I'd like to hear Matt's response to that. Why did they jump on this? Over, this, over the last century and a half, they, they, they keep switching what their best evidence for evolution is because it keeps getting disproven. And when, when conspiracy, yeah. conspiracy Cats brought that up, I said, I'm not prepared for that. I've never heard anybody use that as evidence for evolution. So uh, that it doesn't mean it can't be prepared for, yeah, but it's ridiculous. Now, you guys' channel, Standing for Truth, they can go there and see uh, videos uh, about this topic. Uh, is that correct? Uh, yeah. Um, matter of fact, he just had a debate on that very topic. Um, he even brought it up with Erica last night in the debate. So most of the time, the questions get asked because, as you know, you do lots of debates, and so they like to throw a lot of things at you in the Q and A at this point. So right. they're always trying to stump you because if you can't answer a question, then it's a victory to them. Right. So. Basically, they're coming at any new angle, so that's why they do like the new ERV angle. It's, okay, it's a good one for them because they All right. go, "Oh, we got." Him. Yeah, we got him, Matt. What's your thoughts on ERVs? Well, basically, evolutionists consider them ancient fossilized footprints. Basically, they're long, long ago viruses that were left behind in the body that we can see remnants of. Basically, picture an ancient ancestor in your mind. Let's call it Bigfoot for right now. Okay, half human, half ape. So now Bigfoot probably did some things that he wasn't supposed to do and decided to swim in a swamp or something ridiculous. And he got bombarded by tons of ancient viral infections. But Bigfoot was strong, so he fought off these viruses. And he lived to pass on these new, now inactive viruses to his offspring through the germ line. This kept happening generation after generation until literally thousands of these viruses that had attacked his genome are now inactivated and have accumulated through time. They wanted to complete, uh, uh, they actually were complete ERVs during this time. They're called HERVKs. Now, um, what happened is they broke up into pieces, and that's what we call ERVs today. So then, when Bigfoot diverged, creating chimpanzees and then the human line, um, basically each line brought with them ERVs from that common ancestor, Big, you know, Daddy Bigfoot. So. That's what we're seeing. We see these fossil footprints inside of us, and evolutionists believe that we're looking at these ERVs that are inside of our bodies today that came from basically matching up in the chimpanzee position from this ancient common ancestor. So they think that is the best evidence for evolution because it proves that we have a common ancestor. But we creationists come along and say, wait a minute, hold on. Let's just look at a couple things before we make that conclusion. Are these ERVs really useless junk fossilized remnants of viruses well look they actually have many functions so why are dead viruses now having functions in our model well they say you know they didn't predict this so that's their risking device they say well there's so many of them now that's why some of them evolved functions uh -huh. so for no reason at all other than the sheer amount of them that are inside the body they activate it but not in a bad way they actually activate it in ways that are good for us. For example, some ERVs actually fight viruses, the very thing that they are. So they want us to believe that an ancient, useless, long ago virus beneficially activated and then went rogue and started killing its own kind. Does that make any sense to you, Dr. Owen? 
Well, it does because they're so desperate to want to believe in evolution. They want so badly to get rid of God, they will jump on anything, anything, as evidence. Uh, but it looks to me like we have a common designer. Uh, I mean, Charlie Darwin thought right. the cell was nothing but a bag of jelly. I mean, he did not know the function of all the complex things. And now we know one cell is more complex than the space shuttle. So they can't use that anymore. So this ERVs is the latest one from the uh, plotting pussy who thinks he's, <laughs> he's brilliant, you know. <laughs> right. Well, the more they study these things, the worse it gets for them because they've started looking at even these really small fragments that are really short in base pairs. And they discovered over 51,000 51, of them. They initiate transcription on a large scale with inside of us. And others are epigenetic markers, their DNA methylation, they're associated with binding sites. And then the critics will go, well, some of them cause problems, but yeah, that's because all of them have lethal mutations in them. That's why. It's not because they're still viruses, it's because they're riddled with mutations, just like our model of genetic entropy. Right. Mutation cause harm. You know, they cause problems. Ed function ed functionless ancient viruses in the genome, they wouldn't act like this. But here's the kicker right here. Uh, without ERVs, we couldn't even have offspring. Without ERVs located at, at a cell two location or the second level, embryogenesis won't even occur. So we won't even be developing embryos if we don't have ERVs in our system. But that's, I mean, that's just ludicrous to think that these are worthless remnants of something. But it gets even worse because there's more evidence that they're required for life because two families of ERVs were discovered to produce functional proteins during the formation of the placenta, meaning they're critical for the cellular fusion of underlying mammalian placental formation and maintenance. So again, no offspring could be born without ERVs. And they expect us to believe that these are just fossil remnants. Like, what did what did life do before these were embedded in the body and became useless? Well, it's very right? simple. Well, for, oh, for millions of years, nobody had babies. But then, 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 they, yeah. then it slowly works. It, 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 give them time. That, <laughs> give them time. It'll work. So then they have year. Yeah. So when they come along it, it, and they say, the final assertion, now they can finally have babies. That's how ridiculous this argument is, Doctor Holden. Yeah. Well, if you really want to put, if you want to want to finish them off, just tell them this. Uh, they'll they'll say, well, not all ERVs have function. Well, remember, first of all, they don't test for function. They believe they're functionless. So nobody's really out going outright and saying, oh, look, let's go test these things and see what they do. They're not. But what we do know is that ATP is being used by ERVs. The body does not ever use give up energy on something that's pointless and useless. It would never waste energy. Right. So the fact that ATP is being used by these things, that's proof right there that they do have a function. All right. Well, and Dr. Holman, you always give a really good analogy with, um, with with a kid. For example, we understand so little of the DNA language of the genetic code, and oftentimes I've heard you give the analogy that it's like a kid looking underneath the hood of a car. You know, if you told him to just remove anything in that under that hood that you believe is useless, he's going to start tearing things out left and right because he doesn't know the uses of of, of these things. You know. Right. It's a matter of his level of understanding is kindergarten level he doesn't know what that does and it, it, that's the way with our human genome you know I, I like a computer code how many lines of code are there to Microsoft PowerPoint tens of thousands millions maybe I don't know so nice. what if somebody's looking through all these lines of code and say what do we need this for take it out <laughs> you, may, you may crash the whole program uh, one little mistake in a code can crash the program don't they have patches all the right. time they have to put on yeah. All right. Yep. Well, thank you so much, fellas. And go to Standing for Truth. Uh, that's your YouTube channel? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Standing for Truth. Uh, we, we put out almost daily material on Young Earth Creation. You've been on our channel. You, you've blessed us with your presence for about, I think, 10 debates you've, uh, you've done on my channel. So, yeah, anyone interested, they can uh, look us up and subscribe. Sounds great. Thank you so much, guys, for coming on. And uh, you get uh, Conspiracy Cats uh, educated on that one. Here's my prediction. If he finally realizes or admits, which I doubt he will do, but if he ever admits, you know, ERVs are not proof for evolution. Rather than repent and get saved, he will go searching for something else to back up his theory. Because he needs that theory to reject God. There's only two choices. There is a God or there isn't. Nobody's thought of a third choice. So 
if there's a God, then he owns the place. He's, he, he, he makes the rules, do what he says. They don't like that. So I predict you will demolish him on ERVs and he will still not get converted. He will go on to the next one. Uh, and then if you can demolish that one, he'll go on to something else. That's what the evolutionists have done for 160 years. They don't want God in their life. That's the problem. That's Second Peter. Yep. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, st Standing for Truth, get a hold of their channel and watch it and subscribe and tell others about it. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, Ken. All right. Thanks so much, Dr. Oak, and God bless. All right. Come visit Alabama. Bring a hammer. We got work to do, okay? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Well, thank you so much.